So this is new, this is different. Today, Unworth It, we're just going to one restaurant. Let me do my best Steven impression. Today on Worth oh It, my not holding my okay. scale. <laughs> we're gonna go to what is supposed to be the best restaurant in Los Angeles called Providence. Always a restaurant that comes up or most expensive restaurants in LA. Best restaurants in LA. This is an opportunity where we can try out an entire tasting menu. Is that what we're doing? Or how many courses it is? <laughs> Today we're gonna be having seven. It varies by the menu that you get. It is number one on Jonathan Gold's 101 Best Restaurants in LA. Mm -hmm. He's pretty much the Yoda of restaurant criticism. He's won a Pulitzer Surprise. I think he's the only... Pulitzer Surprise. <laughs> God, now I know why you say so much dumb shit, because when you're driving a car and trying to do this at the same time... Now you get it. Also, when you look into the rearview mirror, you make direct eye contact <laughs> with Adam. I thought it was obvious that I was having eyes with Adam all day. My name is Michael Smaresti. We're here at Providence Restaurant in Hollywood, and you guys are going to be eating a seasonal menu that we have today. Providence is a fine dining, modern American seafood restaurant. Our goal always is to exceed people's expectations for food, for service. We want people to come in here and leave thinking that it was better than what they thought it would be. This is one of my very first experiences in yeah. fine dining, and honestly, like it's it's kind of daunting. You're dropping a lot of money, and yeah. you want to enjoy it as much as people say you enjoy it. But I mean, my advice is relax. If you come in here and you feel like nervous and have butterflies in your stomach, it should be about anticipation. Like, it shouldn't be like, I hope I don't fart at the table or use the wrong fork. If you want to crack jokes with us and have a good time, then that's what we want to do for you. So, you know, I think a great way to start a meal is maybe show up a little bit before your reservation and spend some time with Kim at the bar and try one of his cocktails. Today you're going to try our new Bloody Mary. When you order oysters at the restaurant, best oysters in town, you get cocktail sauce. This is the kitchen's version. As a byproduct, we get almost like a concentrate for a Bloody Mary. We roast corn, we infuse it in tequila, I separate the corn, dehydrate it, grind it up, I rim the glass with this roasted corn. It's as if their cooking is in my drinks, which is a great sort of harmony between the bar and the restaurant. Cheers, we Cheers. Mm. Do you like Bloody Marys? I like new experiences. It's like a spicy soup. You love spicy soup. I've heard a lot about this restaurant, and I'm nervous about it. I think that's a good feeling, though. It's like going on an awesome roller coaster. Chick, 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 up to the top. This is the introduction. This is the prelude. The animated short before the Pixar movie. This is when the shuttle is standing on the launch pad and there's just all that condensation coming off. What the f is that stuff? It's just. Uh, it's the foreplay. Okay? I'm ready to do this. So first, you guys are gonna have the Rocky Sweet Melon with uh, Gui Duck. So the melon, it's compressed in a sous vide machine with lemon verbena. Sort of changes the texture and allows the flavor to penetrate the melon. The Gui Duck are, you know, at the peak of their season. I mean, we always try to have whatever it is that we're starting with be a reflection of the season. Chilled melon soup with it. That dish is really just about summer. We ready? We're, we're starting? <laughs> are you ready? No. <laughs> Cheers. This is a whole different flavor world. See, this is what I'm scared of. We're on another, like you jump on a court with LeBron James, you don't know what to say or do. It's okay. a whole different sport when he's playing it. I can honestly say that I've never eaten anything that looked like this, ever. Here we go. That is delightful. As a first bite to a meal, it's like you're walking towards a circus and you hear the elephant sneeze. Whatever an elephant sound. <laughs> Yeah, I knew I was getting into some but I didn't quite know until I got that first sensory hit. Uh, second course, you're going to have the sashimi of Thai snapper with Korean water kimchi. You know, what's best I think about Thai snapper is the texture in your mouth, and then number two, the very clean oceanic flavor. White daikon, red daikon, green onion, jalapeno, pear, and apple, and all of those ingredients are fermented together. So then the last thing, the juice that the radishes were pickled in, and we do everything we can to preserve integrity and the flavor and the texture of all of the fish that we work with. Raw, any seafood is what I always want in my mouth. Oh, snapper. Mm. Oh my god. That's pretty good. People who get weirded out by sashimi are like, ew, it's raw fish. Like Dead fish washed up on the shore. Trash cats eating fish skeletons out of dumpsters. That doesn't look like a fish skeleton in a dumpster. That looks like a garden that grew fish. And it was a beautiful petal of fish. Can we go and back to the garden thing? Because I want to say, sure. no truer words have ever been spoken, number one. And number two, if you come up with that, 
make it yeah. happen. You're going to have the abalone with charred avocado. The variety that we use is almost meaty and bacony. The abalone are raised, then we massage each one of them by hand, which I know it sounds silly, but it's true. We roast the abalone in a combination of olive oil and butter. It's set atop a grilled slice of avocado and a puree of charred avocado. And we put a crumb that is coconut, ground tortilla, and dried banana, oven dried banana. At the beginning of this, I thought my taste buds were playing basketball with LeBron James. Turns out, my taste buds are, have entered a ballroom. We're part of this just massive dance. You can't name a famous dancer. You had basketball and LeBron James, but you said ballroom. You just said fancy dance. So? Abalone. It's a flavor punch. You expect the abalone which is massaged by hand, by the way. I'm not even massaged by hand. So many things happening that you can't pinpoint one thing. Yep. And I think that is the best part, right? You know, when you watch a movie and you're like, that was a great movie. What was your favorite people, part? Yeah, it's like, no, the whole thing. I mean, there was a part where somebody got blown up and it was awesome. That's the abalone here. Next, we're gonna have Santa Barbara spot prawn. Spot prawns are really only great when you cook them from live. We do a lot of different things with the heads of the prawn. We turn in that chip, others we turn in a sauce, still others we put in a spice mill with sea salt so that when we season the prawn, we're actually seasoning it with a salt that's flavored with prawn. I don't know if I've ever had a better prawn than Santa Barbara's. This is like a, a childhood snack for me that has been elevated a billion times. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. I can't believe how good that is. I mean, I can believe how good it is. <laughs> this is balanced, but a little bit on edge, you know? Like, it's a, it's a dance. I'm, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised with how much I'm enjoying this. I feel like you've really grown into the occasion. California white sea bass, wrapped in lardo and foie de brick, which is a Tunisian pastry. Once we've roasted it on all sides, then we can slice it and show like the beautiful rosy center of the fish. The lardo just melts, but leaves behind all of that deliciousness. There's a whole bunch of herbs, a lot of which we grow upstairs, just practicality. We pick what we need for the day, we leave the rest of the plant to keep growing. Dwelly Farm, they have this corn, they test the sugar levels. Oftentimes the sugar content will be as high as stone fruit, which is really remarkable. So whenever it's available, we always have it on the menu. You know when people say next level? This is a next level. Fish, sea bass, playing the bass. This is what you're like on real dates. A treat? <laughs> oh yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Hello, pork. Okay, we've gotten to the part of the meal and we're just going hard here in your mouth. I want to eat like a whole hot dog's length worth of this. And then lastly, we're going to have A5 Wagyu from Kagoshima, Japan, served with a Maris Piper potato. Simply grill it over bichotan charcoal. High heat, burns very, very clean. Chef de Cuisine, Tristan, started working on an idea that he had, which was to confit the potatoes whole, hollow them out, all the scrap we get from the Wagyu, we make bordelais sauce, fill it with a sauce, and then we deep fry the potato, brush it with more of that sauce, and then garnish it with little pickled red onions and chive and that sort of thing. It's the finest Wagyu you can buy, for sure. What should we do first? Eat the steak. This looks like a Minecraft block. That you could like Lego that on top. Wag steak. you, wag me. Oh. oh -ho! If cows laid eggs, there you go. No, if potatoes laid eggs. <laughs> if a cow turn into a soup dumpling. It is like a soup dumpling. This is yes. the best steak I've ever had. Best potato I ever had. So you guys probably want to talk to Jesse about the desserts. I'm the pastry chef at Providence Restaurant. The dessert today is yeah. a black forest of nice. So he has a chocolate cake, a cherry olive sauce, Ilanka cremu, pickle cherry, black olives, cherry whipped cream, which is like a cherry pit infused cream, dry olive crumbs, and then cherry ice cream. Chocolate shards, chocolate lace, just give it some crunch. Is it a lot of pressure to be the last dish of this amazing tasting menu? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's stressful. Yeah. I eat this. It's a cake. You just put your spoon in. What are you talking about? Go ahead. Put your spoon in. Oh. Wow, that was so easy to put my spoon in. FYI, olives are my weakness. I love all foods. Olives, not as much. I love all of the foods. Wow. Well, it's kind of like an adult cocktail, but happening inside of a chocolate cake. What do 
you even come up with a dish like this? Oh, cherry ice cream. Wow. Pretty good, right? And if you tell somebody, oh, I went to Providence and I ate fine dining seafood, it's like it, it can't explain what we experienced yeah. today. The next time I have an olive and a piece of chocolate yes. in some proximity to each other, it's gonna be totally different. I don't wanna sound like I'm gushing, but much like the potato we had, I have been filled with something new and I'm ready to burst forth with it. <laughs> oh, we're children.